Hi, today I'm going to show you how to make a thermal electric flashlight so that you'll never need to worry about having batteries for your flashlight again. So, what is a thermal electric flashlight and how does it work? Well, a thermal electric flashlight is a flashlight that can be powered from the heat of a hand and doesn't require any batteries. It is able to do this by having a temperature differential across a device called a thermal electric module. If you want to learn more details on how these devices work, check out the link in the description below. You might be watching this video because you have heard of Anne Megazinski and her thermal electric flashlight, the hollow flashlight, and you probably want to make your own. If you haven't heard of her and her flashlight, check out the link in the description below to her original Google Science Fair video. There are also many other videos out there about her flashlight and other thermal electric devices she's made. Anyway, Let's get started by pointing out the key differences between our two flashlights. Besides the obvious structural differences, the circuit and the cooling method are the main differences. According to our Google Science Fair project page, which you can check it out in the link in the description below, she uses the LTC3108 ultra low voltage step up converter as her circuit. This chip, which is developed by Linear Technologies, is efficient and perfect for an ultra low voltage input down to 20 millivolts, which is perfect for this project. However, to use the chip, you'll need an adapter breakaway board like these in order to use the chip's pins. You'll also need to be able to make small solder connections in order to solder the chip to the board. If you really want to make the best thermoelectric flashlight possible, this is probably the best circuit to use. Now, my circuit is simple. It uses an N-channel MOSFET, a common mode choke, but a transformer would also work, and a resistor. The circuit is basically a modified Joule Thief, which is essentially a super simple voltage amplification circuit. If you want to know more on how it works, check out the link in the description below. Okay, my circuit is not going to be as efficient as the LTC3108, but it is going to be easier to make and it does not require a lot of soldering experience to make it. Now let's talk about Anne's cooling method and compare it to mine. Her flashlight is air cooled, hence the name hollow flashlight. This is good because it's simple, lightweight, and it cools quickly when the flashlight is not being used. However, air cooling is insufficient because air has a low thermal conductivity, which means that the air will not be able to remove the heat coming from your hand effectively. This will result in reduced power generation, ultimately reducing the light output of the flashlight. For my flashlight, I chose to use liquid cooling by using water because water is more than 20 times thermally conductive than air, and it has a high heat capacity, so it will be able to absorb a lot of heat. This increases the cooling power of the flashlight, which increases the power generation of the modules, ultimately increasing the light output of the flashlight. However, there are some drawbacks. The flashlight is going to be heavier, and the flashlight will take longer to completely cool down when the water becomes fully saturated with heat. Just a key note to remember. Both of our flashlights will eventually saturate with heat over time. When this happens, the flashlight will stop working and you'll have to wait for it to cool down. Now, how do you actually make a thermoelectric flashlight? First, you'll need a body for the flashlight. This can either be an old flashlight that you're not using anymore, or a PVC tube. Just make sure that's at least 7 inches long and 1.5 and inches wide. Second. You'll need a few thermoelectric modules to generate the flashlight's power. Third, you'll need an aluminum bar to be used as a heatsink. Make sure that's at least 5.5 inches long and 1.5 inches wide. Lastly, and most important, you'll need an ultra low voltage amplification circuit to increase the super low voltages that the thermoelectric modules will produce to a voltage that an LED can use. The tools you'll need for this project are a soldering iron, solder, some short length wire, wire clippers, wire strippers, a drill, a handsaw or dremel tool that can cut both aluminum and plastic, epoxy, I recommend using JB Weld because it's one of the strongest epoxies that you can buy, and some thermal compound, sometimes called heatsink compound. First. Let's start with the body. To do this, you'll need to find an old flashlight or a PVC tube that's at least 7 inches long and 1.5 inches wide. 
it needs to be large enough so it can hold a significant amount of water, at least 150 milliliters. The larger your flashlight is, the more water it can hold, and the more water there is, the duration and power of the flashlight will increase, so make it as big as you can. For myself, I found an old Orchard Supply hardware flashlight that used D-cell size batteries. It was about 7.5 inches long and about 1.5 inches wide. The first thing I did, I took the slide switch and battery spring out of the flashlight to make sure that it was completely empty. Next, I took a handsaw and sawed off the top half of the body to get a cross section that was at least 1.5 inches wide and about 5.5 inches long. This is where the aluminum bar and modules will be placed later. I also drilled a quarter inch hole at the end of the flashlight so that I would be able to add water in it later. You'll need to do this to have some way of accessing the inside. I recommend making a hole that's wider than a quarter inch because it took me forever to fill my flashlight with water. For a cap, I epoxied a quarter inch nut around the hole on the inside and then used a quarter inch screw and faucet washer as the top. You can also try using a plastic bottle top or toothpaste top like what I did to these thermal electric generators that I made in the past. Just make sure that it's a tight seal and doesn't leak. I then needed to separate the head of the flashlight from its body so that I would have an isolated place to hold the water. To do this, I used a piece of PVC foam that was about 2 millimeters in thickness. With a pair of scissors, I cut it so that it would fit on the inside of the neck of the flashlight. I then used some JB Weld to epoxy the piece in place to form a seal. You don't have to strictly use PVC foam. I used it just because it was easy to work with and was soft enough to cut with a pair of scissors. You can purchase a square foot of PVC foam off of eBay for a couple of dollars and JB Weld at an Ace Hardware or Home Depot for about six dollars. The seal should look something like this, but it will probably be different for you depending upon what body you're using. Just make sure that you have a leak proof chamber for the water. Now we need to make the thermal electric generator for the flashlight. This is the part that will convert your body heat into electricity. First thing that we need to do is buy the materials. You can find thermal electric modules off of eBay for a couple of dollars each. I recommend purchasing the Tech One 12706 because they're one of the cheapest that you can buy and they're also pretty powerful. An aluminum bar can be bought at any Lowe's or Home Depot for about $8.50 for a piece that is 3 feet long, 1.5 inches wide, and an eighth of an inch thick. You'll also need some thermal compound and JB Weld. You can buy thermal compound at Rayo Shack or Home Depot for $7 to $8. Now that we have the materials, let's start by sawing off a 5.5 inch long piece of aluminum. This piece will be covering the cross section that was cut out of the flashlight's body earlier. So whatever cross-sectional area you have, the aluminum piece will be the same. Then you're going to want to spread a small amount of heat sink compound on the writing side of each module. Make sure that it's completely covered. This will make sure that there is good thermal contact between the modules and the aluminum. Then place the modules down, centered on the aluminum piece, side by side, and then epoxy the edges through the aluminum. Once the epoxy is finished drying, Clip and strip the four inside wires of the modules. Make sure the wires are no longer than the length of each module. Then solder the modules in series and epoxy them to the edge of the module. I recommend using rubber bands to hold the wires down while the epoxy dries. This is the most important part of the flashlight. Without it, the LED will not light up. The first thing that we'll need to do is collect the materials that we'll need to build it. We will need a white LED which can be purchased at any Radio Shack in a pack of two for $2.50, an ALD 212-900-PAL and channel MOSFET which can be found on Mauser for $2.28 each. You'll also need a 50k resistor and a common mode choke. I found this one off of Mauser for $3 and it was rated at 50 millihenries. You can use one that is less than 50 millihenries and is cheaper. I even tried using a 7 millihenry choke. 
it really didn't make a huge difference. Now for the circuit schematic. It's pretty simple, but let me describe it in detail. One half of the choke is connected directly to VCC and its output goes to the two drains of the MOSFET, while the other half of the choke has the opposing end connected to a 50K resistor before being connected to VCC. Its output goes to the gates of the MOSFET. The source of the MOSFET is then connected to ground. The LED's positive lead is connected to the drain while its negative lead goes to ground. This is a diagram showing which pins are which. Pins 2 and 7 are the gate pins. These need to be connected together. Pins 3 and 6 are the drain pins. These also need to be connected together. Lastly, pin 4 is a source pin. You do not need pins 1, 5, and 8. Now that you know the circuit diagram, it's time to solder everything together. Let's start with the MOSFET. One thing to know is that the pin orientation is based on the side with the writing, with the indentation being the top. I first bent pin 4 outwards so that it would be easier to solder to later. I then bent pins 2 and 7 towards each other, and pins 3 and 6 towards each other, so that I can make a solder bridge across the leads. I also decided to clip off pins 1, 5, and 8 because I didn't need them. After that, I soldered the choke and resistor together by soldering the resistor across the choke's opposing leads. I then clipped off any unnecessary wire and finally soldered it to the MOSFET. For the LED, I had to get some foam to stick the LED into so that it would fit tight in the socket where the old flash light bulb used to be. Once I got to fit, I epoxied it in place. This part totally depends upon your situation. You may or may not have to do this. You might have to find some other way to attach your LED to your flashlight. I then soldered the MOSFET's drain to the positive LED lead and the MOSFET's source to the negative LED lead. I also soldered some extension wire to the VCC and ground so that it would be easier to connect the modules to the circuit later. And finally, I hot glued everything in place. Before I assembled the circuit together, I wanted to do some testing to see how well it worked. First, I tested the output voltage versus the input voltage without a load while using an external power supply. I then tested the output voltage versus input voltage by using an LED as a load while using an external power supply.
Lastly, I tested the output voltage versus input voltage by using an LED as a load while using the thermoelectric modules as a power source. Now let's finish putting everything together. First, place the finished thermoelectric generator on so that the wires are facing towards the head of the flashlight. But you might want to line the edges of the flashlight with epoxy first. This will help form a good seal when you place the generator on and add additional epoxy to the sides. Once everything is epoxied, fill it up with water and check for leaks. You might need to add more epoxy to fill the leaks. If there are still leaks, they might be too small to find and fill with epoxy, so I recommend using super glue if that happens, especially if water leaks through the space in between the modules. Once the correct wires are soldered together, your flashlight should be ready to go. When I made this flashlight, I had only one weekend to come up with a design and make it with whatever materials I had available, so this flashlight is not even close to being perfect. However, I came up with improvements to make this flashlight more powerful and efficient. 1. Using the LTC3108 will provide a far greater efficiency than my current circuit. 2. Have the thermal electric modules heatsink to an aluminum tube that is filled with water. This will significantly increase the cooling power. And 3. Create a larger flashlight body so that it can hold more water. This will increase its cooling power duration. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and share this video. Also, let me know in the comments if you want me to build a more advanced and powerful thermoelectric flashlight and show you how to make it.